What is going on, Warrior Soul Nation? Welcome to this edition of the Warrior Soul Podcast. Today, I want to talk to you about a subject that can throw a wrench into any man's game. And we're talking about low testosterone, low T today. Uh, I get a lot of questions on this subject from people on social media, from veterans who listen to this show, from a lot of men in general. And it's because it's something that's almost ubiquitous right now. There are a lot of men out there who are suffering from low T. And even if you're not in the ranges where your doctor will say that you're you're dealing with low T, one of the problems with the idea of low testosterone is that the ranges for which medical professionals use to diagnose low testosterone, well, They're based on averages, and those averages range from males who are 18 years old and have tons of testosterone all the way up to males who are in their 70s. And if you are a 30-something-year-old man and you have the testosterone that medical professionals would consider normal and it's in that range that would be normal for a 70-year-old male, well, even though they're not going to diagnose you with low T, you're going to feel a lot of those symptoms. And in addition to that, well, the corporations and the business element is such that, well, they know that this is a problem. The businesses out there know that, know that this is a problem. The corporations out there know that this is a problem. So what you're finding is that there's a lot of commercials stemming around low testosterone. There's also a lot of these clinics popping up everywhere, these anti-aging clinics. And While I definitely don't have a problem with people using hormone replacement therapy, I think there's a lot of men out there who really need it, a lot of men in the veteran community who really need it. Uh, One of the things that's happening out there is that pretty much anybody who's able to prescribe medicine is getting into this, even if they don't have the qualifications to deal with the ins and outs of an abnormal hormonal cascade. And so that means that you're going to get a lot of doctors out there who will take you on as a patient, but what they'll do is they'll give you this kind of cookie cutter protocol. They'll give you like a few hundred milligrams of testosterone cypionate every other week, and then they'll give you an aromatase inhibitor. But here's the deal. If you're dealing with low testosterone, it means that there's something that's broken in your body. It means that there's something going on. Your body is is dealing with an abnormality. It's dealing with something that's broken down. And just simply injecting a few hundred milligrams of testosterone cypionate every week without addressing that underlying issue, well, that underlying issue, which could be very serious, it could be a a chronic illness, it could be uh, some other type of deficiency. If that underlying issue isn't fixed, you could be headed for more problems down the line. And in addition to that, some of the problems that are particular to veterans, um, for some of the reasons why veterans uh, face a lot of low T in our population, well, if those underlying problems aren't aren't getting fixed, your condition can get worse. Uh, It's not going to help you in a lot of ways that testosterone therapy should. And you are going to be dealing with a lot of issues as you get older. So what I want to do in this episode is, number one, I want to give you some ideas for how to fix some of those underlying issues. In addition to that, I also want to give you some things that you can try, that you can do before you head off to a hormone replacement clinic and end up spending lots and lots of money Uh, when you could have potentially fixed this issue naturally. So in addition to this episode that I'm putting out there for the podcast, I also wrote an article and you can find it up at www.warriorsoulagogi.com and that's A-G-O-G-E forward slash articles forward slash low dash testosterone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to link this article uh, in the show notes for this episode. I'm also, uh, if you're on iTunes, I'm also going to put it up on YouTube. For those of you on the video there, I'm going to put it up on YouTube in the description box so you guys can go and check that out. And what that article is going to contain, it's going to contain a lot of links to 
some of the the sources that I'm going to be talking about in this episode. It's also going to contain some step-by-step things you can do to start to solve some of these problems naturally or to try to solve some of these problems naturally. I'm not giving you a guarantee that you're, you you try to go after this naturally and all of a sudden your testosterone is going to go up. I don't blow smoke like that. But these are things that you can do at least to improve your health and improve the chances that your body is going to start naturally producing testosterone. So first thing I want to talk about is, well, why do men get low T? And particularly, why are we seeing so many problems with low testosterone in the veteran community? And it happens for a number of different reasons. So number one, men tend to burn the candle at both ends, right? And, and what that means is we don't get enough sleep. We don't get enough rest. A lot of times we're stressing out like crazy throughout our day. And we're also either overeating or undereating. We're also over either overeating or undereating, right? So what happens if you are stressing out like crazy, you're, you're burning the candle at both ends? Well, if you're not sleeping like you should be, we've had Dr. Kirk Parsley on the show before. And one of the things he talked about is the fact that a lot of men are deficient because they're surviving on five to six hours of sleep a night. And if you're not sleeping properly, essentially what you're doing is you're not giving your brain enough time to produce some of those hormonal precursors that are going to lead to testosterone production. You're also not giving your body a chance to shut down a lot of the chronic inflammation that exists, the chronic inflammation in your intestinal tract and the chronic inflammation in your brain. When you're sleeping, your body's actually working on healing you. So the first thing you need to try here is is to make sure that you're getting eight hours of sleep. You should also be doing a bit of stress management. I've talked quite a bit about meditation. I've talked quite a bit about making sure that you're recovering from your workouts, you know, not going crazy in the gym all the time, not doing CrossFit seven days a week along with jujitsu and along with runs, but really giving your body a chance to recover. Remember, you don't grow in the gym. You don't improve in the gym. You actually improve while you're resting. So maybe pull your workouts back to four or five times a week. Give yourself some days for recovery. Give yourself some deload days. Don't do high intensity training all the time, though you should do it a couple of times a week. And uh, you know, don't don't continue to burn that candle at both ends. Uh, in addition to that, why do veterans tend to get low testosterone? Well, there's this idea of traumatic brain injury, which a lot of veterans suffer from. And they think actually more veterans suffer from it than they originally thought because you can actually get traumatic brain injury, not just from being blown up, not just from being knocked out, not just from taking a direct knock to the head, but actually being in proximity to explosions or even just getting your head head jarred around, you know, something like manning a 50 cal or coming down hard on a helicopter or doing rappelling. All these things can really jar your brain around. And we've had both Dr. Mark Gordon and Andrew Marr, good friend of the show, um, on this podcast talking about these types of scenarios where veterans are getting traumatic brain injury from just being shaken up a little bit. Uh, Andrew was never directly hit, never directly knocked out, and yet he suffered massive symptoms from traumatic brain injury. And he's actually making a documentary right now called Quiet Explosions that details his story as a Green Beret. You know, he was a breacher. He would blow doors off of buildings and things like that. Uh, but he was never directly knocked out. And and there came a point in his service where he couldn't walk straight. He couldn't think straight. Uh, he, was, he was experiencing massive depression, surviving off of alcohol. And a lot of the symptoms related to TBI, well, they're symptoms that you would think you would get from post-traumatic stress. They're symptoms you think you get from, from depression. But uh, traumatic brain injury has actually been demonstrated to raise suicidal ideation. It's been demonstrated to raise the amount of suicides, the amount of suicide attempts to raise depression. And they've, they've tested the blood of a lot of service members who've committed suicide and they've actually found that those service members were experiencing TBI. So if you're a veteran 
who may have dealt with traumatic brain injury, there's a potential that low testosterone is actually coming from that traumatic brain injury and some of the, the, the impact of your service. So number one, I would go and definitely check out the Warriors Angel Found Warrior Angels Foundation with Dr. Mark Gordon and Andrew Marr. Definitely look out for that documentary that Andrew is going to be putting out there called Quiet Explosions and listen to the rest of what I'm going to have to say here. Uh, like I said, uh, and, and also go back and check out those episodes we did with Dr. Mark Gordon uh, because he talks about quite a bit of this stuff. So the other aspect of this is inflammation, right? Inflammation, total body chronic inflammation. And if you haven't been in a scenario where you experienced traumatic brain injury, well, the other thing that could potentially be doing this is total body chronic inflammation. Now, what is inflammation? We all need inflammation. Inflammation actually helps us to heal. When we get injured, we get acute inflammation. And it's that inflammation that actually kickstarts the healing process. You can feel that type of inflammation. But there's another type of inflammation called chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation isn't necessarily inflammation that you can heat, you, you can feel. It's low level. It's like a low level flame burning in your body. And this is the one that's actually a lot more harmful to you. Why? Because you can't feel it. It's constantly going and it can do a lot of things. It can cause heart disease. It can lower your insulin sensitivity, it can cause diabetes. It can cause cancer, right? But along with that, you have to remember your testicles. Your testicles are outside of your body for a reason. They don't like heat and they don't like inflammation. So if your inflammatory levels actually rise, what can happen is the Leydig cells in your testicles can start to die off. And as they die off, those Leydig cells, they're responsible for producing your testosterone. As they die off, you're, you're, you're literally shutting down testosterone at the source. In addition to that, inflammation can also affect your brain. Like I said before, that's one of the reasons why TBI is so harmful. But if you've got inflammation coming from other sources, and I'll tell you where in a second, then that can actually disrupt your brain. It can affect your pituitary gland, and it can actually shut down production of hormonal precursors like luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. Luteinizing hormone helps to stimulate your Leydig cells to produce testosterone. Follicle stimulating hormone helps to stimul stimulate sperm production. So you're literally shutting down your fertility with high levels of, of inflammation. So where does chronic inflammation come from? Where, where does it happen? Well, like I said before, it could start with burning the candle at both ends, not getting enough sleep, not getting enough rest, but it can also come from your digestion. Now, I run into a lot of men, a lot of men who deal with chronic digestion issues. I'm one of them. I have ulcerative colitis. I have a uh, inflammatory bowel disease, so I really have to watch this stuff. And because I've been dealing with this disease, I've done so much research on how to improve your digestion. I, I went through uh, Ben Greenfield's Superhuman Academy protocol. I, I, I done, I've read countless books. Um, and this is what I do for a profession. I've writ written a lot of articles on this for Testosterone Nation. So what I'm going to give you now are six things that, that you should do to reduce inflammation in your gut and uh, that, that will also help you to... Uh, optimize your digestion. All right. So number one, this is completely free. It is something that we can all do. It's something that you can start doing right now after this podcast, chew your food. Stop just eating quickly and, and rushing through your meals. Sit down. Don't watch TV. Don't do anything else. Don't eat meals during meetings. Sit down and chew your food. Chew your food until it's liquid. Chew your food until it's mush. Not chewing can absolutely ruin your digestion and ruin your body. If you're not chewing your food enough and you're sending a partially digested food down into your, or a partially chewed food down into your stomach, a couple of things can happen. Number one, you're not, your saliva actually contains a lot of enzymes that help to start the digestive process. And if you're not chewing your food enough, you're not giving those enzymes enough time to work. 
right? And so if you put that food down in your stomach, your stomach acid, uh, it, 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 it does a partial job, but it's not going to do the job that it would be able to do had you chewed properly. So when you send undigested food particles out of your stomach through your duodenum into your upper intestinal tract, then what can happen is that can actually damage the interior lining of your intestines. And the thing about the interior lining of your intestines is this, your intestines contain about 75% of your immune system. They're also connected to your brain in multiple places via something called the vagus nerve. This is called the, the brain gut connection. And because your immune system's down there and it's separated from the waste products in your intestinal tract and your food uh, by a lining that's, that's just a single cell thick in some places, what you're allowing to happen is for those food particles to interact with your immune system. And when that happens, your body sends and, and creates these inflammatory, inflammatory cytokines. These are chemicals that go throughout your body and they actually raise your inflammatory levels. They start, they start attacking different things. And your immune system can actually start attacking these food particles because they see them as foreign bodies. So that can create a whole host of things. And this condition is called leaky gut syndrome. I'm sure you've heard of it before. So you want to really prevent this as much as possible. You really want to chew your food until it's liquid, until it's mush. On top of that, a lot of you deal with heartburn. Uh, in Italian, we call it agita, right? Um, and because a lot of men deal with heartburn, they also take antacids, Tums, or their doctors prescribe them proton pump inhibitors. Now, here's the deal. I'm not a doctor, right? I, I can't diagnose you with anything. But what can I? T what I can tell you is that when you reduce your levels of stomach acid, that's actually going to inhibit digestion and that's going to increase the likelihood that undigested food particles go into your intestinal tract. So here's the deal. One of the things that you'll find if you do research on a subject, and I highly recommend you do, and I'll include some articles in the note in the show notes for this episode, is you start to understand that acid reflux, GERD, agita, heartburn they're usually caused by not producing enough stomach acid, right? Because you haven't produced enough stomach acid or enough of the enzymes that are required to digest your food. So what you need to do instead of taking in acids or what I recommend you do instead of taking in an an acids is that you actually do something to raise your acidity levels in your stomach. Because if you're not producing enough stomach acid, then your body rushes to put more in there and that's where it gurgles up your esophagus. So rather than doing that, one thing you can do is you can start to put a couple of tablespoons of apple cider vinegar into a glass of water and drink that about a half hour before you eat. In addition to that, I also recommend that you try taking digestive enzymes about a half hour before you eat. Okay. Now this will do a couple things. Number one, the, the apple cider vinegar will raise the acidity in your stomach. That'll help with digestion. The digestive enzymes, a lot of men, when you get into your thirties and forties, you stop producing a lot of the enzymes that help with digesting food in your stomach, right? Remember your stomach doesn't absorb any nutrients. It's just a vat to hold the food that you just put into your body for a while. So um, what I recommend doing is taking those digestive enzymes about a half hour before you eat. I've got uh, links to recommended digestive enzymes that you can check out on the show notes for this episode, and those can help out quite a bit. The next thing you should do, and because digestion a lot of times starts even before you begin chewing your food and even before you, the food, you put the food in your mouth, you need to prep your food properly. So what does that mean? That means... Um, number one, chopping up your vegetables. When you chop up vegetables, what that does is it releases natural enzymes in the plant that in the wild, those enzymes would help the plant to release polyphenol, polyphenol so they could, help, could uh, heal themselves. But on your counter, what it's going to do is it's going to help to break down that vegetable lining that's really hard to digest. And it's going to soften up that wall so you'll be able to eat them. In addition to that, it's going to get the plant to release more polyphenols if you let it sit there for about 10 minutes. And that will actually make 
the plant, the, the nutrients in the plant more bioavailable for you. So you're actually increasing the nutrition content of the plants you eat when you chop them up. When it comes to nuts, grains, and beans, you should soak them and sprout them, right? You should soak them and sprout them uh, with larger nuts like Brazil nuts. I soak them for about 24 hours, then I let them dry, and then I put them in the freezer to keep mold from building up. And I've got a complete guide for this in the article I wrote to go along with this episode. So if you're not following along, you Jeff, definitely check that article out. So prep your food po- properly. The next thing, you want to make sure that you're getting good sources of resistant starch and prebiotic fiber in your diet, All right? Now, why do you want this? Well, there's friendly bacteria in your intestinal tract. And those friendly bacteria, when they feed on resistant starch, they create a fatty acid called butyrate. And butyrate actually helps to heal the interior lining of your intestinal tract. So in order to facilitate the production of healthy bacteria to get them to multiply um, and to feed them so that they're they're going to create they're going to produce butyrate um, you should have good sources of resistant starch and prebiotic fiber so prebiotic fiber comes from eating vegetables comes from eating things like celery right um, comes from eating your leafy greens okay um, but also uh, with your prebiotic starch You can get that from plants or or from bananas. You can get that from rice that's been cooked and then cooled. You can also get uh, potato starch, like a a half a teaspoon of potato starch. You can stick that into a glass of water and you can drink that. One thing about potato starch though is that if you do it too much, it's going to make you really gassy, right? It's going to make you really gassy. Uh, So don't do too much of it. You could also get resistant starch supplements. Again, I've got links to all this stuff up on the article attached to this podcast episode, all right? So resistant starch. The next thing, probiotics. How do you get probiotics? Well, you can eat fermented foods. I drink kombucha every day. Uh, I eat raw sauerkraut along with each one of my meals. I use it as a condiment. You could also do kimchi. Kimchi is a fermented cabbage that, that is popular in Korea. And it's loaded with probiotics. So getting probiotic rich foods. If you can tolerate dairy, then you could do something like kefir or you could do something like yogurt. If you can't tolerate dairy, then stay away from it because that'll just ruin your digestion even more. Um, You could also supplement with probiotics, uh, a live probiotic. And what I recommend is a good shelf stable probiotic in order to do this. I do both because I've got really, really bad gut health because of my ulcerative colitis and I really need to keep a good good environment in there. So, um, you know, uh, I, I, I take pro- probiotics every day and I eat fermented foods every day. The final thing, and this is huge for veterans because they were given these things out like Tic Tacs when I was in the Marine Corps, and that is you should avoid NSAIDs at all costs. You should avoid NSAIDs like Motrin, right? Um, ibuprofen, any of that stuff, you should avoid it at all costs. Why? Well, what happens with NSAIDs is that they actually inhibit your interior lining of your intestinal tract from healing. They shut down all inflammation. So any place that your your interior lining of your intestinal tract needs to heal, um, it's not going to do that if you're taking NSAIDs all the time. So avoid taking NSAIDs. Instead, I recommend taking natural pain relievers. A lot of people give me resistance on this. And I'm telling you, there is nothing that can ruin your gut health and can actually make chronic injuries worse than taking NSAIDs all the time. So uh, again, I recommend a natural pain reliever. I use one called Phenocaine. It's a mixture of curcumin and a few other things. uh, And I'll have that linked up on the article for this episode. Uh, Other supplements you should think about taking, all right? So omega-3 fish oil. You want to get a good cold pressed omega-3 fish oil. Uh, Omega-3s help to lower inflammation in the body. And in nature, we have both omega-6 and omega-3s. There's a few other omegas, but these are the two that you really want to worry about. They're supposed to operate in ratio to each other. So you need omega-6, right? But omega-6 raises inflammation. And the thing about our diets is that we already get lots of omega-6. It comes from a lot of the plant oils we eat, comes from a lot of the grains we eat. 
comes from a lot of the prepackaged foods we eat, a lot of the oils you're going to get from restaurants. They're really high in omega-6. Doctors recommend canola oil, although I don't use it, um, and, and that's really high in omega-6. So you're already getting tons and tons of omega-6 in your diet. That means you need to supplement with an omega-3. Omega-3s will actually help to stem a lot of the inflammation that those omega-6 cause, the omega-6s cause. So I supplement with up to 6,000 milligrams of fish oil a day. And I did that uh, after doing a podcast episode with Dr. Michael Lewis, who wrote the book, when when brains collide, right? Those of us who've been exposed to gunshots, explosions, and things like that, who might be suffering from TBI, well, omega uh, omega three fish oil has been shown to literally shut down a lot of the inflammation from traumatic brain injury. The problem is that it's really expensive. So what I did was I found a really inexpensive source, and I've got that linked up in the article for this episode. Um, really inexpensive. Like I'm telling this is like a deal compared to a lot of stuff you're going to find out there, even on Amazon. Um, beyond that magnesium, magnesium is responsible for over 300 different reactions around the body. It also helps with sleep, facilitating sleep. So if you're not getting enough sleep or you can't get to sleep for some reason, taking a good magnesium supplement is going to really help you to get to sleep. It's also going to help you to shut down inflammation. I take uh, magnesium carbonate and the magnesium carbonate I take, I, I take it with a little bit of citric acid. I squeeze a little bit of lemon juice in there and that allows it to convert to magnesium citrate and my body makes it really bioavailable. Um, and you could do that too. There's a few products out there. There's natural calm. There's also, you could buy magnesium carbonate in bulk, which is actually really inexpensive. I got links for that. Um, and uh, they, they, this will help to shut down a lot of inflammation. It will also help you to sleep much more effectively. Beyond that, vitamin D. Vitamin D has been demonstrated to, help to, to raise testosterone levels in men, particularly men who are deficient in vitamin D. And a lot of us don't get enough sun. So it's really important that we supplement with vitamin D. Um, if you're deficient in vitamin D, you want to take upwards of 35 IU per pound of body weight. And the thing about vitamin D though, is that it also leads to calcification, right? It can leach calci calcium into your blood vessels and that can lead to calcification of those blood vessels. So what you want to do in combination with vitamin D is you want to take vitamin K2 and you get a really good vitamin D, vitamin K2 combo. Um, I use the now uh, combo. It's got 5,000 IU of vitamin D along with, I think, 130 MCGs of vitamin K2. And that helps to keep that calci calcification at bay. Another important supplement that literally every veteran should be taking is N-acetylcysteine. N everybody should be taking this, not just veterans. N-acetylcysteine is a precursor to cellular glutathione. And why is that important? Well, cellular glutathione helps with cellular turnover. That means that a lot of the, the disease cells, a lot of the unhealthy cells, well, what this does is it, is it helps to create new cells, helps, helps your body to replace those disease cells with healthier cells. And that's really important for your intestinal tract and it's really important for your brain. So you want to take between 600 and 1200 milligrams of N-acetylcysteine a day on an empty stomach, right? So I take mine in the morning, I take mine at night. Um, and this really helps. This is one of the things that Dr. Mark Gordon highly recommends, all right? Um, finally, zinc. Zinc is an important element in testosterone production. And in men who are deficient with testosterone, supplementing with 150 milligrams of zinc per day uh, will act has been shown to actually raise testosterone levels. If you don't have a deficiency, then zinc hasn't been shown to help with it. But if you do have a deficiency, uh, there's been multiple studies that demonstrate that zinc helps to raise your testosterone levels if you're in a deficient state. So I recommend taking 150 milligrams of zinc citrate per day. Um, that should give you, a, I think, between 30 and 50 milligrams of elemental zinc, um, which is what's important there. Um, so definitely zinc if you have a deficiency. Um, 
couple of other things here, right? So I talked about burning the candle at both ends. I've talked about sleep. Um, you want to make sure that you are eating properly. Now, what's eating properly? There's a lot of debate about that. Um, what I would say is this. Um, I don't try to be super dogmatic about anything. I, I, I've done the keto diet for a long time. I've done the paleo diet for a long time, but I'm not saying you got to go keto or you got to go paleo. What I recommend is that you try to focus on eating whole food. You try to get protein sources at every meal. You try to load up about 80 to 90%, to 70, probably 70%. I'll be realistic with you guys. 70% of your plate should be vegetables, right? Green leafy vegetables. You want to stay away from a lot of those nightshade vegetables out that are out there. What are nightshade vegetables? Well, eggplant, tomatoes, uh, potatoes, peppers, onions. I'm not saying you can't eat them, but too many guys out there are just eating nightshades. So instead of eating those nightshades, you want to focus on your leafy greens. You want to make sure that you're getting enough vegetables into your meal. Make sure they're prepped properly. Make sure they're softened, they're steamed so that you can digest them. Make sure you're eating nutrient-dense food, right? Stay away from a lot of this takeout food. Stay away from the alcohol, right? Um, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do an episode, I think next week, uh, on how I quit drinking. And I'm not saying you can't ever have a beer or whiskey again, but don't live off this stuff. If you're drinking six, seven nights a week, if you're, you're, you're doing it constantly, then that can really raise your inflammatory levels. And that can also really throw a wrench into your testosterone production, right? And if you're dealing with digestive issues in general, don't neglect them, right? Don't think you're just going to take some over the counter thing and that it's just going to get fixed. You really have to look after your nutrition. You have to look after your lifestyle. You have to make sure you're chewing your food. You have to stay on top of this stuff. Too many men go far too long without getting these things looked after. Um, and beyond that, I think that's all I got. There's a lot of information in this episode. So if you guys have questions about this, don't be afraid to reach out to me at chris at warriorsoulagogi.com. That's chris at warriorsoulagogi.com. Or you can hit me up on DM on Instagram or on Twitter or on Facebook. I'm happy to answer your questions. I'm happy to help you guys out with this stuff. It's too big of a problem to ignore. Uh, and let me know if this podcast was helpful for you or not. Uh, like I've said in earlier episodes this week, our mission is to empower the U.S. military veteran community to live their absolute best lives so that you can step, step up as leaders and transform this country, right? That's our mission. And we're trying to get into the ears of as many veterans as possible in 2020. My goal is to be a top 20 podcast. And to do that, I need your help. Uh, we, we don't ask for anything in return. I don't care if you ever buy anything from me ever. The only thing I ask is that you head over to iTunes and write a written rating and review. It helps so much to get this information into the ears of more veterans, and it helps to spread awareness about the show. So if you could do that for me, that would be amazing. If you do want to buy something from us to support the podcast, well, you're going to get some amazing gear in return at the Warrior Soul Shop. That's up at warriorsoul.shop. We've got some awesome t-shirts. They're designed and printed by U.S. Marine Corps veterans. You can go and check them out. We've got skivvy shirts and graphic shirts. And I also want to say something about our sponsors. Um, Number one, F-Bomb Nutrition. They make delicious, low-carbohydrate, high-fat snacks. They make macadamia nut butters. They make coconut oils. They stick them into this this really portable packet that you can carry around with you anywhere. If you're still in, you can use them to supplement your MREs, get a good, healthy snack in there. They've also got meat snacks, and they've got cheese snacks that you can take advantage of. They're so awesome. You can head over to www.dropandfbomb.com. Use the code Warrior Soul at checkout. Get yourself 20% off your first order. And then beyond that, if you want to support yourself, you can check out the Warriors Obituary Society. That is our mastermind, our own private mastermind. And what it's there for is to empower its members to live epic lives worthy of epic obituaries. Every member goes through an eight-week development program up front before they become a full member. During that program, you're going to be designing and customizing your own fitness and nutrition plan with my guidance. You're also going to be creating your own personal finance plan so you can start knocking down debt, start investing so you can start working on building your dreams. And then on top of that, 
what you're going to do is you're going to get live calls and we are going to be helping you to focus on building your network, on reaching your goals as far as your business or career goals and helping you to foster amazing relationships. We get together for live calls each week and we've got a forum where we're constantly communicating, constantly pushing each other on our greatest goals. And programs like this normally cost a lot. This one does not. It's actually very inexpensive. So if you want to check that out, it's up at www.warriorobituarysociety.com. I want to thank you guys so much. Oh, one more shout out to the great people over at Save the Brave, savethebrave.org. They do amazing, amazing uh, uh, camaraderie events for veterans, fishing trips, golfing trips. They're also helping out Gold Star families. If you want to become involved with Save the Brave, head over to savethebrave.org and check it out. I want to thank you guys so much for listening. And again, send me questions if you have any, and we'll be back at you next week with some more amazing content. Peace.